it's time for a money video. One year ago, I made a video called How much money my game made in one year, where I shared my game's revenue, how much of that money I got to keep myself, my hourly wage and fun things like that. Lately, I've been getting a lot of questions asking what does the situation look like now and if in fact I have become a millionaire yet. Psst, spoiler alert. No, I'm not a millionaire. Maybe after my next game. Fingers crossed. So anyway, it has been one year after I posted that video, so I figured now is a very nice time to take a look at how much money my game made in two years. Alright, let's get started. First of all, at around one year mark, my base game had sold around 17,500 copies on Steam, which totaled to around $113,000. And if we take a look at the current situation, we can see that the base game has sold around 24,000 copies. So that means around 6,500 new copies sold, which results in extra revenue of around $33,500, bringing the total revenue from the base game to around $146,000. Last time the average selling price of my game was around $6.50. Now if we calculate the average selling price of new copies sold, it comes to a bit over $5 per copy bringing the lifetime average selling price to a bit over $6. Alright, but my game also has a DLC, which has now been out around one and a half year. One year ago, the DLC had sold around 4,700 copies. Let's see what the situation looks like now. So, it seems the DLC has sold around 9,300 copies, which means around 4,600 new copies sold, bringing in extra revenue of around $14,000. The total lifetime average selling price of the DLC is now around a bit over $3. Now, before I give my thoughts on these numbers, let's still take a look at a few other miscellaneous income sources. My game has also been sold on a few Nexus.gg creator stores. Last time my game had sold 39 copies on these creator stores. My game hasn't been that active on these stores after that, but I can see that it has sold 19 new copies there. That's around $150 of extra revenue. Then my game also has trading cards, which brings in a bit of extra revenue. In total, the lifetime amount of that has been around $24. All the second year sales amount to around $47,500, which means that the lifetime revenue of my game currently is around $176,000. And if you ask me, what do I think about this number? I wouldn't say anything. I would just do this. Kidding aside, as I mentioned in my last video, uh, I wasn't expecting the game to sell this well, so it's very nice to look at numbers like this. The second year amount is obviously lower than the first year, that is to be expected. Usually games sell the most in their first year, as their popularity fades and the sales saturate the target group, the copies sold get lower and lower, while at the same time higher discounts bring the average selling price lower and lower. My second year sales were almost 40% of the first year sales, which I think is a very nice amount. Of course, there's one small detail that you have to factor in. At the time of my first year review, my DLC had been out only around 6 months, while this time around the DLC has been out for the full year. So that's why the DLC sales for this second year are a bit higher than they comparatively should be. But still, if you only compare the base game sales from the first year and the second year, the second year is still around 30% of the first year sales. Alright, so I'm happy with this number, so let's move on to more data. Last time I went through the sales chart and detailed what are all the peaks there. But now if I look at the lifetime sales chart, I don't think there are really anything too interesting to say about it. 
pretty much all of these peaks are just like normal steam sales or discounts that I have set for the game. Here's an updated chart for what the regions look like in the sales. So as you can see, United States and China are the two best selling countries by a very clear margin. In my last video, I looked at a chart that said that during the first year, an average game will get 58% of its total sales. And based on that, I calculated that the estimated lifetime revenue of my game would be $222,000. The same chart estimated that during the second year, the average game would get 75% of its total revenue. So I figured, let's see how my game fits into that equation. Okay, so I have the 58% here, which is around the amount I got in the first year. So let's see, what should I have earned in the second year according to this equation? $166,000. So since my actual amount was higher than what the equation estimated, I think you could say that either my game got its revenue faster than the average game, or it will likely sell more than the 222,000 that I estimated before. I am hoping it's the latter one. And of course, these are only just estimates and averages, so it doesn't really have any like real meaning, just fun playing with the numbers. Then hey, maybe you are also interested in how much of the money I get to keep myself. So when we have the total sum, first of all, we need to deduct the returns, chargebacks and taxes. That takes around $26,400 out of the pot, so that's around 15% of the total sum. Then out of the remaining sum, you need to deduct the marketplace cut, which usually on Steam is 30%. So when we count those out, we are left with $105,000. This is the money that my company has earned from the game during these two years. But of course, this is not money that I get to keep myself just yet, unfortunately. From the money that hits my company's bank account, let's first deduct the development costs. Luckily, those have not increased from last year and in my case they are quite small, I would say. So the development costs take 3% of the remaining pot. That is still quite a nice sum, but that is the company's money, not mine. If I want to use that money to buy food for my family or something else, I need to transfer it to myself through salary, dividends or some other means. This will differ based on the country your company is operating in, and I won't go deeper into the details, but at least in my country, the one fact that remains is that all of these methods require for me to pay taxes. The amount of taxes I need to pay varies widely based on many factors, but I will use the same number that I used in my last video, which was 25%. That should not be very far from the truth, at least in my case. So when we remove that sum, we are left with the amount that I get to keep myself. So currently that's around $76,000. Even though that is only 43% of the big sum, meaning that I get 43 cents for every dollar of gross revenue from my game, I still think that's a very nice sum, even considering all the effort I put into the game. So to calculate my hourly wage, let's divide that sum by the total number of hours I spent making the game. So that makes it nice $45 of net income for every hour I spent. Again, I am really happy with that. Okay, I think that should be all the most interesting numbers. So I've earned a decent amount with the game, but I'm nowhere near a millionaire. But hopefully after my next game, I will be. I'm trying to manifest that into existence. But hey, if you made it this far, please leave a like and a, maybe a comment for the YouTube algorithm. It will help my channel get some visibility. Alright, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.